Hey, my name is Terrell Steele. Hi, my name is Evan Bailey. <laughs> Howdy, friends. Welcome to Cowboy Corner. I'm your favorite cowboy, Rancher Joe Bob. There's lots of exciting things to do out here on the ranch, like herding cattle or castrating a bull. But sometimes, us cowboys just plain get bored, and we want to do something a little more classy with our lives, like reading a novel. So I decided to check out what was on the big city book list in the New York Times best-selling books. And what I came across was The Freedom Rider's Diary, a wonderful novel written by students in a classroom in... Long Beach, California. After I read the book, I was more interested than ever to hear the actual stories from the people themselves uh, behind the Freedom Riders Diary. So what we did was is we brought in our very own Cowboy Terrell to do the interviews on two very special people that were involved in the book. Mrs. Gruel, the teacher behind the book, and one of her esteemed students, Joyce, joins Cowboy Terrell in the interview of the decade, right here on Cowboy Corner. Hi, I'm Cowboy Terrell, and we're coming, you, coming to you from Cowboy Corner today. Uh, I was out on a crazy adventure hunting some bears and just happened to run across these two interesting people. I actually didn't have nothing to do, so I happened to pick this crazy book up a couple weeks before on the Freedom Riders, which, uh, and it's crazy, but I ran into the author of the book and one of her writers. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a special guest with us. Her name is Miss Gruel, and here she is. Hello. Hey, Miss Gruel. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Are you enjoying the outdoors? I am. That's excellent. Uh, I got a few questions just to kind of get a better insight on your book. Okay. All right. To start off, Miss G, how do you think teaching your students about the Holocaust had impacted you? Well, before my class, my students have never heard of the Holocaust. And on the first day of class, I asked them, I said, raise your hand if you ever heard of the Holocaust. And none of them had ever raised their hand. And I said, raise your hand if you have ever been shot at. And almost the whole class raised their hand. So after that, I definitely wanted to go in depth about the Holocaust. And after teaching them about the diversity and the racism, of, of the Holocaust and how it led to millions of innocent people's deaths, I think it really, it shocked them. And they had all built walls around each other and I think that that brought them closer and kind of knocked those walls that they had built up down and they came together as a class. There's a, it's a good, very good insight on how you use your teaching views to try something new. And Another question for you. How would you describe yourself as a teacher? Um, I would just say that I'm a normal teacher. I love my job and I just try my best to help my students succeed. I don't think I do anything different. I just do what I love to do. Nice. And you have a passion for teaching. I of course. Do. I can see that through your writing. Very interesting. Uh, what do you think? is in the future for the other students? Um, I think all my students will graduate next year. They'll go into college, they'll get jobs. I think some of my students will become teachers and they'll become better teachers than what they are students. And I think they'll all be extremely successful. It's amazing to know, to meet someone that has impacted kids nowadays. You hardly see that. And to wrap up this interview, why did you change from the normal teaching curriculum to the journal entries? Well, you could see that the regular teaching method was just not working. And none of them had any interest in learning or writing or doing anything. But when I allowed them to do their journal entries, that just gave them an opportunity to express their feelings and I never realized how important that that would be to them that I would have never dreamed that they would have actually written down what they wrote down which has become this book so I think it just really helped get their feelings out and they enjoyed that and they just enjoyed writing about it. 
Right. Well, it's good that you found a subject that you could touch base with them on. And ladies and gentlemen, coming up in a moment, we have another special guest with us, which was actually one of Miss Gruel's Freedom Riders herself, Miss Joyce. Hi, Cowboy Terrell back here at the Cowboy Corner. We now have the special guest speaker of one of our Freedom Riders, Miss Joyce Roberts. And uh, in reference to like the outdoors, since we are out here in the country, you know, uh, I, I notice that your allergies are kind of bothering you a little bit and seem to be stuffy. Is yeah, that... slightly. I'm not used to this environment, you know, so. But I am enjoying it. It's really nice and beautiful out here. I'm just... It's a lot different from California, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> a lot different from Long Beach. <laughs> yeah. You miss Long Beach? Yes, I do. I really do miss it. But I like this new experience. How is that? Well, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start off with a few questions just to kind of get a better insight, just kind of like me and Miss Gruel did. Kind of just get a better insight of your position in the book, you know. All right, in your diary entry, you state, when I was born, the doctor must have stamped national spokesperson for the, black, for the plight of black people. Why did you view this as a negative thing? Please explain to us how that made you feel. Um, I actually viewed that as a negative thing because I don't know what every black person feels. And as like one student, I was the only black student in AP and all the courses in my class. And as a student, I felt like they expected me to know everything about black people, like how black people felt about this and that and all these other things. And that's a lot of pressure. And I only know what I feel on these things. Like I only know my opinion. So I was kind of taken back. It was really hard to accept the fact that somebody was just stereotyped that you know every single thing about black people. That's very good news. That's right. Carry on with the next question I'm going to ask you. Did you feel like you were being stereotyped at any point? Yes, I did. Um, in my diary entry, I actually put, like, to pick it back off that last comment I made, they just expected me to know everything when it came to black people. Like, I wrote about how they wanted to know what's the black person's perspective on the color person and affirmative action and all this stuff. And I didn't like it because I feel like they're expecting me to carry the weight of the world, you know, uh, from a black person's perspective, and I'm not able to do that. Gotcha. I did feel stereotyped. Which is understood. You should. How did it feel being the only black person in your class, in your AP class? Um, I did feel a lot of pressure, and it's okay because I eventually moved on from not being in the AP class. But while I was there, I did feel a lot of pressure. Um, like I had to stay and I had to fight to show that black people can, you know, be smart or can be in an AP class or in an honors class. I felt a lot of pressure because I was that only person representing my race in a sense. So um, that's really the main thing I felt, just enormous weight. So in a sense you kind of had a view of what the abolitionists went through. In a sense. Gotcha. Which is amazing. So, Going back to this, Miss Gruel changed all of, all the lives of your students within the book. So exactly who was she to you? It's a hard one. <laughs> she was really like a parent in a sense. She went beyond the role of being a teacher. She wanted us to embrace who we were to and who are who we still are. She wanted us to just forget about all the things like forget that we were in school just write what was on our hearts and express ourselves fully not just be limited to oh we're in a classroom and this is what you're required to do no she let us freely express ourselves so it was like we were in a writing community we weren't in a classroom anymore we all felt open to share whatever so she kind of created a whole new environment for y'all which is cool which kind of got y'all which probably is why y'all were so successful and ladies and gentlemen, back for y'all back home. We want to give y'all a big yeah and come back to the Cowboy Corner. <laughs> wow, Terrell. That interview was legend. Wait for it. Dare. Well, folks, that wraps up Cowboy Corner for today. And y'all come on back now and see us again, you hear? Yeah!